Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, mercy, and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon all of you. I'm Mushafiq and I'll be your MC for the session today. Islamic knowledge in association with science and faith would like to welcome you to today's session on the topic Keys to Allah's Pleasure by Imam Fuad Muhammad. Imam Fuad grew up in Seattle, Washington, where he now resides. After completing his high school, he traveled to Egypt to attend Al-Azhar University and then return to serve the Seattle community as an imam and a, as a lecturer in different masajids. He has, he has also established learning centers for children, youth, and adults. He has earned ijazas in many fields of Islamic sciences, including over 50 ijazas hadith, in hadith and its sciences, fiqh and tafsir. Imam Fuad currently attends the University of Washington pursuing a double major in community psychology and educational studies, as well as a minor in policy studies. Without further ado, let us begin with today's session. Assalamu alaikum. <coughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Um, Jazakumullah khayran, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from you, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for inviting me on the show. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it a means in which we attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and attain the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and attain Jannah to the Firdaus al-A'la. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. <clears throat> Inshallah, today what we are going to be doing is we are going to go over the ways in which you and I can attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Attaining the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is a goal that every single Muslim has. From the day that they recognize that they want to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the reason why they do it is so that we can earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can be pleased with us and through the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everything else that we are seeking in this dunya and also in the akhirah can be attained now <clears throat> the way that this talk is going to be structured bidnillah is first we are going to look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first describes the people that have earned his pleasure and what can we do? What can, what benefits can we take from them that we can implement in our lives to be from amongst those people, those people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with? Now, after that, we'll look at some of the other things that will keep the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala away so that we understand it's not only things that we have to do, but also things that we have to avoid in order to attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, simply attaining the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I don't think I have to explain what it really means. Or what it can earn you in this dunya and in the akhirah. Just to give us you know, a, a small understanding. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to bless the believers on the day of judgment. With allowing them to enter into Jannah. After they enter into Jannah, they're going to be having enjoyment. This moment of enjoyment, this is something that you and I look forward to. 
to where all of the ibadahs that we sacrifice for in this dunya, all of the hardships that come with it, all of the struggles that come with it, we want a reward to come at the end of all of this. And that reward, it's not the Jannah itself. It's not that we're going to be from the people of Jannah and going to be drinking from the rivers and we're going to be eating from its fruits and eating from its you know, meat and so on. But this, this is just one of the things that you're going to get as a person that has attained the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jannah is for those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with. And this is why one of the du'as that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches us to make and we hear especially you know, during the months of Ramadan when we listen to Qunuq or whenever we hear it's the du'a in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us to say Allahumma inni as'aluka ridaka wal jannah Right, oh Allah, I ask for your pleasure and I ask for your Jannah. Oh Allah, grant me your pleasure, be pleased with me. Right, when you say, Allahumma inni as'aluka ridaka, right, oh Allah, I am asking you to be pleased with me. Grant me this thing, wal Jannah. And then after that, oh Allah, grant me Jannah. In this hadith, the first thing that we learn is in order for us to attain Jannah, we have to be from the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has pleased, is he's pleased with. And this type of dua is not only from the Words of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, but you also find it in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa taala He tells us in two different places where those that are righteous are making du'a for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa taala. We know this, you know, ayat that we hear a lot of times where Allah subhanahu wa taala He says, "Wa insana bi walidehi ihsana." But we have commanded man, we have commanded mankind to be dutiful to the parents, for them to treat them in goodness. Hamalatu ummuhu kurhan. And the, one of the reasons why you should be treating your parents with kindness, with goodness, with ihsan, it is because one, your mother carried you while it was very difficult for her to do so. Carrying you in the belly for nine months was not something that was easy for her to do, but this was something that caused the hardship. So because she did this for you, what are you going to, what, what, what do you have to do? You have to be someone that is treating them well. You have to treat them with ihsan. Well, and then he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وضعت, وضعت Not only did she carry you in hardship, but she also, when she was giving birth to you, another hardship came. And then, you know, taking care of you, carrying you around and all of this time. All of these things that they're doing to you, until not only did they take care of you when you were young, they took care of you until you were able to reach a place where you had your own strength and you were able to do things on your own, until even you reach the age of 40. Now, when you reach that age of 40, and this is not only restricted to people that reach this, you know, this age of 40, it is something that every single one of us should be doing from today on and going forward. What is this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, after they reach 40, what are you going to say? Qala Rabbi awzi'ni an ashkura ni'amataka allati an'amta alayhi. Oh Allah, give me the ability to be able to be thankful for the things that you have blessed me with. All of the blessings that you have given me, let me be from those that are able to thank you for them. All of the, not only the ones that you gave me, not only the blessings, the benefits and the pleasure and the, all of the goodness that has come to me that you have given me, any ni'mah that you have blessed me with, also, وَعَلَى وَالِدَيَّ and also make me, you know, my parents likewise. Make them people that are able to thank you for the blessings that, that you have incurred upon them, the blessings that you have given them, the things that you have blessed them with. And let me do actions. Let me engage in righteous deeds, in righteous deeds so that I can attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that I can attain the pleasure of my parents that went through all of these things. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us in another place, min qawliha, wa qala Rabbi awzi'ni. Again, the same dua that we're hearing, oh Allah, give me the ability and ashkura ni'mataka allati an'amta alayya wa ala walidayya wa na'amala salihan tardah. Like, this is what we want. We are making dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us from those that are pleased with or that he is pleased with, that we attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, again, this is why, why do we do the things that we do? It is for us to attain this pleasure. So the first key that I want to discuss with is that we have to be people that are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly to make us from those that he is pleased with. 
Either we can do it in this long dua that we hear from the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us where you say قَالَ رَبِّ أَوْزِعْنِي أَنْ أَشْكُرَ نِعْمَتَكَ الَّتِي أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيَّ وَعَلَى وَالِدَيَّ وَأَنْ أَعْمَلَ الصَّالِحًا تَرْضَاهُ So the first key is that we have to be people that are asking. The other dua that we can make, the dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he has instructed us where he says اللَّهُمَّ إِنِّي أَسْأَلُكَ رِضَاكَ وَالْجَنَّ So this is the first key that we really really need to focus on where we are making dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us all of the things that we are looking for in this dunya and in the akhirah through the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they're going to come. So this is the first key. The second key is also found in the same verse that we just talked about. This same verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this dua that we've been taught not only should I be thankful for the blessings that you have been given me oh Allah guide me to righteous deeds guide me to righteous deeds because these are the deeds that are going to do what? These are the deeds that are going to allow me to attain your pleasure, to attain the ridwan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, attaining the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is impossible without attaining the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, Musa alayhi salam, when he was leaving his people and to go be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the things that he says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he sees what happened to them, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks him, وَمَا أَعْجَلَكَ عَنْ قَوْمِكَ يَا مُوسَى Musa, he says to them, uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, قَالَ هُمْ أُولَائِي عَلَىٰ أَثَرِي وَعَجِلْتُ إِلَيْكَ رَبِّي لِتَرْضَى The reason I hasten towards you or I rush towards you was so that I can attain your pleasure. The reason I left them and came to this place is so that I can attain your pleasure. Your pleasure is what I am seeking. So again, now, this is the third key that we get from this verse. Let's go back to the first one. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us be from the people that have earned the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So with dua, then with righteous deeds. Then thirdly, we want to be people that are hasting towards, we are rushing towards earning the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what does this mean? What does it mean for us to run towards things that are going to allow us to attain the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it means that whenever options come to you in your life in which you have the chance to earn the pleasure of Allah and if you don't do this action, you're going to maybe earn the wrath of Allah, the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are always running towards the options that are going to allow you to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does this mean again? It means that we are people that are staying away from sins. We are running away from sins so that we can go and attain the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, these are three things. I know that these three things might seem like there are a lot for us to do. But these are things that we can do on a, things that we can do on a daily basis to allow us to get to where we want to go which is earning the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every time that we wake up in the morning, every time that we're making wudu to pray salah, every time that we're praying the salah action themselves, every time that we're going somewhere, how easy it is for you to take a few seconds and say, Allahumma inni as'aluka ridaka wal jannah. Oh Allah, I ask to earn your pleasure and I ask for your jannah. How easy is it for you to be able to do this thing? This is not something that is very difficult to do. But, Let's say you are someone that wants to go beyond that in trying to what? In trying to attain the, ple the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describe as having the ridwan of Allah, the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Who has unlocked with their key of ridwan? Who has unlocked the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us, Muhammadun Rasulullah, wal-ladheena ma'ahu ashiddaa wa ala al-kuffari ruhamaa'u baynahum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's describing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the companions. And he says that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is the messenger of Allah. And those that are with him, ashidda'u ala al-kuffari ruhama'u baynahum, that they are very stern when it comes to dealing with the disbelievers. But when it comes to dealing with the believers, they are people that their hearts are soft, and in their dealings they're soft, and they have mercy on one another. Tarahum rukka'an sujjadan. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, not only do they have these two characteristics, but they are people that you are going to see always in sujood. They are in sujood, meaning that they're always offering the prayer, they're always praying the salah, increasing in how much they pray the salah. Why? يَبْتَغُونَ فَضْلًا مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرِضْوَانًا Because through this salah of theirs, through these actions of theirs, they are trying to attain you know, attain a high status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the virtue of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then, or 
the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the people that are our role models, the people that we look up to, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is telling us that they attain the mercy of the, the Ridwan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through three things. One was that when it came to dealing with the kuffar, they were very stern. When, two, when it came to dealing with the believers, they, they were people that their hearts were filled with mercy. And then lastly, there were people that increased in their ibadah, in their salah. Their salah was something that they would pay so much attention to. They would pray it so much, so much, so much that whenever you see him, whenever you see them, tarahum ruka'an sujada. Like you would see them in a constant state of prayer. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another place describes the companions, he says that the, the way that you know them, it is from their athar sujood, from the signs of sujood that they do and this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about them in the previous books that came also and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he also tells us how the believers like what are some of the things that we can do to attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we've talked about dua we've talked about salah we've talked about righteous deeds Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he tells us in an ayah ya ayyuhal amanu لا تحل شعائر الله ولا الشهر الحرام ولا الهدي ولا القلائد ولا آمين بالبيت الحرام يبتغون فضلا من الله أو يبتغون فضلا من ربهم رضوانا. In this verse, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is talking about the rituals of Hajj, the things that you have to do in order, you know, when you go and perform Hajj. Why are we doing these things? Why? What is the reason for us sacrificing? What is the reason for us to, uh, you know, go and make tawaf around the Kaaba. What is the reason for us to sacrifice the animal? What is the reason for us to go in the sacred months and so on? It is so that we can attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, when he narrates on this, you know, the, the, when, when he explains this first, he says, Allah bihajjihim, like they are trying to go and attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through their hajj, or that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with that act of hajj that they're performing so another way another key is to pleasure to the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is by performing this hajj that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us now we've went over almost five different ways or five keys that a person can attain jannah a person or can attain the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then after the next step from earning the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is attaining jannah to the firdaus al-a'la now what are these five things they might be difficult for some they might be easy for some, but maybe we need more, more ways, more keys for us to attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say on attaining the pleasure? Who does he describe? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Imam al-Baghawi, rahimahullah, when he explains this verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, you know, the poor muhajireen that left uh, they were kicked out of their homes uh, and they left behind their wealth. All of this, the reason why they did it, the reason they made hijrah from Makkah to Medina when they were being persecuted was to go and look for the virtue of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to go and seek his ridwan. So Imam al-Baghawi rahimahullah, he says that they were driven to go and perform hijrah. The only thing that they were seeking in leaving behind their homes and leaving behind their wealth was to go and attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, we see that in order for us to attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there has to be some sacrifice that we are making. There has to be some effort that we are putting it, you know, actually putting in. And for the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was them sacrificing their homes, it was them sacrificing their lives, their wealth, and everything that they know, their families, to go and migrate to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to actually go and follow him. Now, we might not be in that situation where we have to migrate from place to place to go and attain, you know, the, the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us safe. Now, there are still other things that we can do. Again, the five that we mentioned, they are still things that we have to struggle with. Things that are going to make us actually struggle in this dunya. Now, what about things that are not ibadat? Things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings to you to test you. And these are you know, ibtala'at, where they're coming, tests are coming to you, signs are coming to you, and you have to, you don't know what to do. You're overwhelmed with stress, you're overwhelmed with the loss of somebody, any type of calamity that comes to you. It is an opportunity for you to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In, a, uh, in an authentic hadith that is in the Jam'i Imam al-Tirmidhi from Anas ibn Malik anhu, 
He says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّ عَذَمِ الْجَزَاءِ عَظِمِ الْبَلَاءِ That the strength or the, the level of the reward that a person gets is based on how heavy the actual act that he is doing. If meaning, if you do something that is easy, the reward of it is going to be small. If you do something that is very hard, requires a lot of sacrifice, it is going, the, the reward is going to be similar. So however hard the action is, the bigger the reward. However easy it is, the smaller the reward. But then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ إِذَا أَحَبَّ قَوْمًا إِبْتَلَاهُمْ And when Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala loves a people, when you have attained the love of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, what is Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala going to do? He's going to test you. Tests are going to come to you. You're going to be tested. Now when you're tested, you're going to have two reactions. One of two reactions. Either you're going to be pleased with this test and you're going to say, Ya Allah, this is a test from you. I'm going to be patient and I'm going to earn your pleasure through it. If you are from these people, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, فَمَنْ رَضِيَ فَلَهُ الرِّضَى Whoever is pleased when the calamities come to him and he has sabr, meaning he's not pleased with the calamity coming, but he's pleased with the qadr of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, that all of these things are happening because it is the qadr of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And when he is pleased with that, خلاص. For him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give him his pleasure. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, وَمَنْ سَخَطَ فَلَهُ السَّخَطَ And whoever is the opposite of being pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whoever is wrathful, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the only thing that he's going to give him is his wrath. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from this. Now, what are some other ways to attain rida from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the ridwan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Before we continue, let us recap. Let us go back and see what it means to attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first thing is we want to be from people that are constantly making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying, Oh Allah, make me from the people that attain your pleasure. Make me from the people that attain your jannah. Allahumma inni as'aluka ridaka wal jannah. Oh Allah, make me from those that uh, have attained your pleasure or allow me to attain your pleasure. And also allow me to attain your Jannah. So that is the first thing. The second thing, it is doing righteous deeds. Any righteous deed you do, if you do them correctly, if you do them upon the way of the Prophet wasallam, through them you're going to attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every single deed that you do, they are going to lead you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're going to lead you to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three. You want to be from the people that are, when it comes to dealing with the believers, you have a soft heart. You are a person of mercy. And then number four, you are, you are from a people that is constantly in ibadah, in praying the salah. you praying the salah, you praying the salah. And then number five, whenever a calamity comes, you are from the people that are pleased. And you know that the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to come through this calamity that has come to you. So you're going to have sabr, you're going to have your patience, and you're going to deal with it in the best manner possible. The way in which we were instructed to deal with them, through having sabr, through being patient, through understanding that this is the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and staying with it like that. Now, another thing, another key to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is actually spending your wealth. Spending your wealth in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to make you from those that attain the mercy or the attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is one of the keys. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَمَثَلُ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ وَبْتِغَاءَ أَمْرُبَاتِ اللَّهِ You know, given the similitude or the example of those that give their wealth to do what? Why are they spending their wealth? Why are they giving zakat from it? Why are they paying zakat, sadaqah from it? So that they can attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we see through giving, you are going to also attain the, uh, you know, the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the ridwan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, let's move on to the uh, last set. Or oh, actually, we'll do two more things that uh, we can do to attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know that we are sitting here Listening to a lecture. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this from us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it a means for us to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we come together and we are doing khayr and we are obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is from the ways that a person is going to attain. Um, you know, a person is going to attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a hadith from Abu Hurairah that is found in the Sahih Muslim, he says that, Inna Allah lakum thalath. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
his pleasure is he's pleased with three of your actions. If you do three things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased. فَيَرَضَى لَكُمْ أَن تَعْبُدُوهُ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا One of the things that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and can earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is that you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you do not associate any partners with him. And this is really what Islam is. Islam is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to and not associate partners with him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is wa arsalna min qablika min nabiyyin illa nuhi ilayhi annahu la ilaha illa ana fa'abudun. That there is not a messenger before you or a prophet that we have sent before you. Except that we reveal to them what? That you should worship me and not associate any partners with me right so this is what the purpose of the messengers are to go and convey to the people la ilaha illallah and part of la ilaha illallah is understanding that we do not associate partners with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says after that and that you Hold on to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You hold on to the righteous deeds. You hold on to the jama'ah. You stay with the group. Like we're doing listening to this lecture. This is how you stay with the group. In engaging with the Muslims from all over the world. I am from Seattle. All the way in America. And most of the people that are listening are in Malaysia. Or in Pakistan. Or wherever it is. This is how we all hold on to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala together. And we do not become divided. Right, this this part of the hadith, this is found in Sahih Imam Muslim. Imam Ahmed, he adds another part where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, And to give guidance, to give nasiha to those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed above you. Now, these are extra keys to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, things that we can do to attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To finish this segment of ours off, inshallah, Let's look at, again, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes as having earned the pleasure of Allah. What do they do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ أُولَيْكَ هُمْ خَيْرُ الْبَرِيَّةِ The greatest creation, the best of creation, are those that believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they do righteous deeds. These two make you from those that are the best of creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are engaging in righteous deeds and you have believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. جَزَاؤُهُمْ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ now their reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to be Jannatu Adinin, a Jannah, heaven, that is forever. Is it is is you know the, the gardens that are going to be ever Tajri min Tahti al Anhar that rivers are going to be flowing underneath it. These gardens that rivers are going to be flowing underneath it, Khalidina fiha abada, they're going to be in there forever. They're going to be there forever. Radhiallahu anhu. Even with this Jannah that is described, the thing that they're looking for when they do their righteous deeds and when they're believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is for them to get to the point, radiyallahu anhum, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with them, an, and they are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is for the one that fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we pass away, when we are returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what do we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say to us? Or what do we want the malaika to say to our souls? We want to be from those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes where he says, Ya ayyatuha nafsul mutma'inna, irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyya. Where when our souls are being taken away, the malaika are going to say to our souls, or to us they're going to say, Ya ayyatuha nafsul mutma'inna. This soul that is so tranquil, this soul that is in peace, this soul that has sakina. Go back to your Lord. Being pleased with your Lord and your Lord being pleased with you. And Allah will tell you, enter into you know, my servitude, my worship. And also enter into my Jannah. You know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a hadith that is found in the Muslim Imam Ahmed, he describes what's going to happen in our last moments. And this is going to be the final thing that we discuss, inshallah, where he says that in al abd al mu'mina idha kana fi inqita'in min al dunya wa iqbalin min al akhira. When the servant, the believing servant, he is at that moment where he's going to leave this life and go forward to the next life. Meaning he's at that moment of death. Death is what takes you to the next life. When you, the believing servant is at that moment, نَزَلَ إِلَيْهِ مَلَائِكَةٌ مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ That malaika from the heavens are going to come down. بَيْضَاءٌ وُجُوهُ That the malaika, their faces are going to be clear and they're going to be white. كَأَنَّ وُجُوهُمْ شَمْسٌ And they're going to be bright. As if their faces are like that of the sun. They're going to be so bright like that. 
معهم كفل من أكناف الجنة and they're going to have the coffin the shroud that a person is going to be shrouded in from the shrouds that are found in Jannah then you know they, they, they're going to have the things from Jannah and then they're going to come sit in front of this person this righteous servant that is about to pass to the next life and you know they're sitting in front of him then after that the Malakul Maut, the angel of death, is actually going to come alayhi salam, and then he's going to sit on the head. When he sits on the head, and this is when he says, Ayyatuhan nafsu tayyibah, or soul that was pure before, that this person that was so pure before, Ukhruji ila maghfiratim min Allahi wa ridwana, come out to the forgiveness of your Lord and to the pleasure of your Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this final hadith that we are discussing, again, that is found in the Muslim Imam Ahmed, we see that the way to attain the mercy of Allah, or the, the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the key to it, is that you have to be a believing servant. A believing servant means someone that with his tongue says, La ilaha illallah. In his heart, he believes in La ilaha illallah. His body follows these two things. It follows his statements and it follows the belief that he has in his heart. And they're offering the prayer constantly. They're making dua constantly. And they're worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way that he should be worshipped. And when they do this, they're going to attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you an eye from those that attain his pleasure. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this a work that is going to get us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for our shortcomings. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adab al-nar. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi azwa'in. Inshallah, um, I think if there's questions, uh, we can take some. And then, yes, uh, we yes, we, we do have some questions. Uh, yes. So, uh, we have the first question here. Uh, how to keep our iman high in order to obtain Allah's pleasure? So, you know, this is this is a question that we can't answer um, just one time. But the way to think about it is we know that our iman is always moving. It is either going up or it is coming down. So it's always doing one of these two things. Now, what are the things that make our iman go up? The things that, that make our iman go up are the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that we worship him, that we turn to him and we ask him. One of the easiest ways for us to attain the, the, the you know to, to attain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to follow what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he tells us. He says, Qul in kuntum If your claim for, lo for, for loving Allah is true, فتبعوني, then we have to follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah is commanding us if you want to attain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have to follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and what does it mean to follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we have to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way that he has shown us and the way that he has shown us is that we have to increase in our salah we have to increase in our istighfar in the recitation of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in doing any righteous deeds we're going to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and through that we're going to earn the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is how we make our iman high by doing righteous deeds. Now, the month of Ramadan is coming up. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow every single one of us to reach it. One of the best ways for you to get your iman up before that, begin with reciting the Quran before the month of Quran is here. Maybe begin with doing some type of salah that is extra. More than the five daily prayers that you have to do, increase in the sunnahs that you have to do. Add the sunnahs slowly. Then read the Quran and do your sunnah before the month of Ramadan comes, especially the night prayer. If you're able to engage in night prayer before Ramadan, when Ramadan comes and takes you and you continue on afterwards, then you're going to be from those that Iman is going to always be high because you have you engage in two of the best ways to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and earn the, 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 the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, increasing in the fasting that we do and also increasing in the uh, praying at night that we do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Any other question, inshallah? Yes. <clears throat> so the next question is, if someone commits sin, then ask Allah for forgiveness, but then repeats the sin and then ask, ask Allah to forgive. Will Allah still forgive us even if we keep on repeating the sin and asking for forgiveness? So someone is repeating the sin but asking forgiveness again. So is that acceptable and will Allah still forgive us? So this is actually the state that you want to always be in. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us to sin. We know that we're going to commit sins and we're never going to ever be free from committing sins. 
This is why the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the authentic hadith he says, he says, لو لم تذنبوا لذهب الله بكم جميعا that if you were a people that did not commit sins, Allah subhanahu wa taala would have done away with you. Then He would have brought a people that are going to sin, and they're going to seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa taala. And Allah is going to accept that forgiveness. In another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he tells us about a man that came before, a man that was in the previous nations. He says this man he made he committed a sin, then he wanted to make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa taala and never return back to this sin. He makes tawbah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says to the malaika, he says that my servant, يَعْلَمُ أَنَّ لَهُ رَبَّنِ يَأْخُذُ بِالذَّنْبِ وَيَعْفُوا That my servant, this servant knows that he has a Lord that can punish him for his deeds, for his sins, and that can also forgive him. وَشْهِدُكُمْ أَنِّي قَدْ غَفَرْتُ لَهُ Bear witness that I have forgiven him. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says some time passes, when this time passes, the man comes back again, he commits the same exact sin, and he makes tawbah again to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the same thing. He says that this is a servant that knows he has a Lord that can punish him and can also forgive him. Then he says, Bear witness, O Malaika, that I have forgiven him for his sin. Then the Prophet says he comes back a third time. When he comes back this third time, committed the same exact sin, and he makes the same dua, the same tawbah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, look at my servant. He knows that he has a Lord that can forgive him and that can punish him for his deeds. Bear witness that I have forgiven him. And for whatever happens afterwards, I've also forgiven him. Meaning if he stays in this same position, he goes back and he commits the same sin. Then he returns and asks, makes tawbah and he makes the istighfar. Allah is going to accept it. Then he wastes a little bit of time and he comes back and he commits that same sin and he makes tawbah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to forgive it. So when we fall into sin, even if it's the same one, we just want to continuously be making istighfar. We want to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make tawbah. And we have to know that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that every single servant, he has a sin that is he's constantly going back to. But what we want is whenever we go constantly back to that sin, we also want to go back to the Tawbah, we want to go back to the istighfar. So making tawbah from the same sin over and over and over, it is going to be accepted. All you want is at the end, the last time, the last thing that happens is you make tawbah for the sin and then you pass away. It doesn't matter if you make it 50 times, 100 times before. If you fall into that sin, you just don't want to be in the last moment committing these sins. As long as you're in that state, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to forgive you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Any more questions or... We have one last question and then we'll end the session. Okay, um, sure. Any specific deeds we can do to get into Jannah? Specific deeds. Um, so specifically, um, I'm thinking you're looking for, you know, one thing to do to enter into Jannah. So without giving you the deed, um, I want to explain how do we attain Jannah. You know, the, the actions that we do, one of the things that we have to understand and the level that we have to get to, is that simply because we do deeds doesn't mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts those deeds. And this is why we do deeds every single time. Now, as a Muslim praying, when you recite Surah Al-Fatiha, one of the ayats that you recite, obviously, because it's in Surah Al-Fatiha, it's, اِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطُ الْمُسْتَقِينَ Oh Allah, guide me to the straight path. But isn't, isn't the fact that you're already praying the salah a indication that this dua has been accepted? That you are already on the straight path, right? You are already on the path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with. Why do you have to keep saying it over 17 times a day? It's because you don't know if the one that you did with Fajr, when you said, إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ is the one that was accepted. You don't know if that salah itself was accepted because we know how we offer salah. Are we offering, are we worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way that he should be worshipped? Or are we just doing things to get them out of the way? So to take this back to your question of what are the deeds that I can do to attain Jannah, don't look at it as I need to do one deed and this deed is going to give me Jannah. The way we should look at it is we want to be people that are doing deeds, good deeds all of the time that are going to attain Jannah. You know, a Bedouin came to the Prophet wasallam and he asked him simple things. He says, who are you? He says, I'm Muhammad. What do you call to? He said, I'm the Messenger of Allah. He said, what message did you come with? And he tells him the five pillars. 
So he asks him, if I follow you, if I accept you, and I do these five things, I pray the salah you commanded me to pray, I fast the fasting you command me to fast, and to go to hajj, and to give the zakat, and to say the, you know, kalimatain, or the shahadatain, am I going to enter Jannah? And he says, if you do that, if you do those things, you're going to attain Jannah. So this is how we should look at it. We should look at it as through Islam, we're going to attain Jannah. We just need to always be doing those. If we just do the bare minimum, continuously, eventually we're going to make it to Jannah. So that is the answer to your question, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the people of Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I think that was the, the last yes. one, inshallah. Yes, that was the last one, inshallah. Jazakallah khair, barakallah fikum, jazakallah. Uh, we have come to the end of our session. We hope that today's session was beneficial to everyone. We thank Imam Fuad Muhammad. May Allah bless him and all those who are watching. May Allah bless you all and your families. Uh, we end with the dua. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Shadwan Allah ilaha 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 ilaha